Hello and all that good stuff. My name is Allie. Welcome to my channel. This is Reading Catastrophically uh, and I talk about book stuff here. This is my Gothober TV. <laughs> now I didn't record myself playing the game because I couldn't be bothered, honestly. But just so you know, the game is really cool and you get yourself a nice set of prompts. And so I got myself my set of prompts and I have books that fit those prompts. So I'm gonna be honest with you, if you watched my book haul, a lot of the books that you saw there, you're gonna see here because I wanna read a lot of the books that I just recently acquired. So the first prompt is a gothic mood read. We love a mood read. I decided to go with Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. Now, since this is a mood read, if there's something else during the month that is gothic that I feel like reading more than this, I'm going to pick that up. But right now, I think this is what I'm feeling. It's gothic, it's romance, it's spooky, it's ghosty, maybe demony. And it's also just gorgeous, and I've had my eye on it for a while. Andromeda is a Deptera, an exorcist hired to cleanse households of the evil eye. She would be hired, that is, if her mentor hadn't thrown her out before she could earn her license. Now her only hope of steady work is to find a patron, a rich, well-connected individual who will vouch for her abilities. When a handsome young heir named Magnus Rochester reaches out to hire her, Andromeda takes the job without question. Never mind that he's rude and demanding and eccentric. That contract comes with a number of outlandish rules and that almost a dozen Debtera have quit before her. If Andromeda wants to earn a living, she has no choice. But she quickly realizes this is a job like no other, with horrifying manifestations at every turn, and that Magnus is hiding far more than she has been trained for. Death is the most likely outcome if she stays, and the reason every Debtera before her has quit. Leaving Magnus to live out his curse alone isn't an option, because heaven help her she's fallen for him that's what got me that last line right there of course she falls in love with him and honestly i'm here for it i love when gothics have a romance in them i mean i read a lot of romance now so are we surprised probably not but i think this is gonna be good i think it's gonna be good we have a book that completes you, and I decided to go with Lake's Edge by Lindall Clipstone. Now, this is another gothic romance. They do complete me, okay? They do. They make me feel just a little bit. Just a little bit of feeling actually enters my empty soul. Violetta Graceling would do anything to protect her younger brother, Arian. Plagued by nightmares, he possesses forbidden black magic that spills from his fingers as shadows. When the notorious Rowan Sylvanen, known as the Monster of Lake's Edge, discovers Arian's magic, Letta fears the worst. She's shocked when Rowan instead presents a risky offer. Refuse at his Lake's Edge estate in exchange for Arian's powers. Soon after Letta and Arian arrive at the once opulent mansion, she discovers that they're not alone. The estate is also visited by the Lord Under, a sinister deity who lurks in the ink-black waters of the lake. Rowan is bound to the Lord Under and is desperate to break the curse that binds him to the lake, slowly corrupting him from the inside. As Letta and Arya work furiously to run unravel the curse, Letta finds herself falling for the seductive and surprisingly tender Rowan, who proves to be more boy than monster, for now. Yet as Letta begins to push the limits of magic, she can't help but feel the alluring call of the lake. I'm kind of hoping the, the romance with Rowan turns into a romance with the Lord Under, because come on. 
what more would I want out of a book other than the romance to be with a terrible, a creepy a demon dude? That's what I want. Next prompt is to read a beautiful book. I decided to go with Anatomy, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. This is another gothic romance. <coughs> yep, we got another one. We got another one here, folks. Nobody is surprised. I promise you that nobody is surprised. This is a buddy read with Hannah and Celine and I think some other people in the Book Wanderers Discord. And this is just, I mean, it's got like this heart dress thing. Uh, the cover is what drew me to it to begin with. So it fits very well for this prompt. Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. Jack Curer is a resurrection man who's just tried to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. When the two of them have a chance encounter outside the Royal Edinburgh Anatomist Society, Hazel thinks nothing of it at first. But after she gets kicked out of a renowned surgeon Dr. Beecham's lectures for being the wrong gender, she realizes that her new acquaintance might be more helpful than she first thought. Because Hazel has made a deal with Dr. Beecham, if she can pass the medical examination on her own, he will allow her to continue her medical career. Without official lessons, though, Hazel will need more than just her books. She'll need corpses to study. Luckily, she's made the acquaintance of someone who digs them up for a living, but Jack has his own problems. Strange men have been seen sulking around cemeteries, his friends are disappearing off the streets, and the dreaded Roman fever, which wiped out thousands a few years ago, is back with a vengeance. Nobody important cares until Hazel. Now Hazel and Jack must work together to uncover the secrets buried, not just in unmarked graves, but in the very heart of Edinburgh society. I mean... I don't know. I'm actually a little unsure if I'm going to like this one. Something about it has me being like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something about this one that has me a little unsure. As always, there's the LGBTQIA plus prompt, and I decided to go with Wranglestone by Darren Charlton. This is a zombie love story between two boys. This is a post-apocalyptic zombie novel, but it's also a love story between two boys, and that just sounds amazing. That sounds truly amazing to me. and. Peter has never really felt at home in a place where practicality and grit are valued above all else. He's nothing like Cooper, the boy he's always watched from afar, but when he is ordered to join Cooper out on the mainland, they find more than just each other. There they unearth a dark secret about Wranglestone's past, one that forces the pair to question everything they've ever known." So that is very vague. It's very vague. I know that it's a love story between the two of them because that's what I've heard, but that is just very vague. I have no idea. I know they're zombies, but they're not even mentioned in the synopsis. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows what this is going to be like? But I think it's going to be a good time. Another staple of the readathon is the BIPOC author prompt, and I decided to go with Babel by R.F. Kuang. I am so freaking hyped for this. I am starting this on October 1st. This is the first book I am starting for the readathon. Will it be the only book I start on October 1st? Absolutely not. This is a chunky boy and I always read more than one book at a time because I don't know. I'm a disaster of a person. I'm I actually don't know that much about this one so I'm not gonna read you the synopsis of this one because I don't want to know really anything. I just know it's dark academia, it's BIPOC, it's a chunky, it's a standalone fantasy. I don't actually know anything else about it and I'm okay with that. Uh, this author, I'm here for it. Have I finished the Poppy War trilogy? No. Do I absolutely need to at some point? Yes, but I know it's gonna break my heart and it's tiny little pieces and I don't know if I'm ready for that. Will this maybe do that too? I don't know. But we're gonna find out. Another one of the prompts that's here every year is Disability Rep, and I've decided to go with Unmasking Autism by Devon Price, PhD. This is a nonfiction. Seems a little weird for this readathon, I know, but bear with me here. I'm autistic, and I've heard really good things about this book. That's it, that's all I got. I. I've just been wanting to pick it up for a while because I got it a while back and I would like to learn more about 
autism and not the ABA force your autistic children to act as societally normal as possible kind of stuff. I don't I don't want to learn that stuff. But this is not like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. That was awkward. Moving on. Then we have a book you forgot you had. Okay, this is cheating. This is hardcore cheating because I can't forget I had it because I didn't know I was getting it. This is the fairy loot book from September. Look at look at the edges. Look at them. Look at the edges. Okay, this is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I was so excited when I opened the box and this was the book. And I had to fit it into this readathon somewhere. It is another gothic. It's gorgeous. I'm hyped for it. I've heard really good things. I think this is another another gothic romance. Yet another. Another one. Okay? Yes. And so, I mean, did I forget I had it? No. Did I kind of forget that this fairy loot box was coming? Yeah, so, I didn't, I mean, we're just going with it. I don't even care, we're going with that. I want to read this book. It's fine. The next prompt is a book with a murder mystery. I'm gonna go with Don't Tell a Soul by Kristen Miller. This is like a gothic, missing girls, spooky house creepy past type thing. It's a YA, I'm pretty sure. It says all the best ghosts are girls on the back, so that's interesting. All Grime wants is to disappear from her old life, from her family's past, and from the scandal that continues to haunt her. The only place left to go is Louth, the tiny town on the Hudson River where her uncle James has been renovating an old mansion. But James is haunted by his own ghosts. Months ago, his beloved wife died in a fire that people say was set by her daughter. The tragedy has left James a shell of the man Bram knew and destroyed half of the house he so lovingly restored. The manor is creepy and so are the locals. The people of Louth don't want outsiders like Bram in their town. And with each passing day, she's discovering that the rumors they spread are just as disturbing as the secrets they hide. Most frightening of all are the legends they tell about the dead girls. Girls whose lives were cut short in the very house Bram now calls home. The terrifying reality is that the dead girls may have never left the manor, and if Bram looks too hard into the town's haunted past, she might not leave either. This is one that I picked up because I don't think I've really seen anybody talk about it, and I was just really intrigued by the cover. So hopefully it's good. We've got a fiery language on the cover. I decided to go with Parallel Hells by Leon Craig. This is a gothic anthology. I don't, I don't know, that's it. It's just, it's a gothic anthology. I'm not gonna read the synopsis of this one. It's gothic short stories. I don't read a lot of anthology collections. I tend to find that I don't finish them. I just can't get terribly into them. But this is gothic short stories. And I'm gonna give it a go. It's also quite short. Like, the entire thing is short. So the stories will be short, the book itself is short. I should be able to at least make it through this, and we'll see what I think of it. We have a book with a plot twist. Now, obviously, I can't know for sure if it's going to have much of a plot twist since I haven't read it, but I have a feeling this one will. And this is this is not a ghost story by Andrea Portes. I feel like the twist is that it's a ghost story. I'm just saying. Daffodil Turner has plans for a quiet summer before her freshman year at college, and luckily she's found the job that can give her just that, house sitting a mansion for a wealthy couple in town. The house itself is gorgeous, a sprawling dreamy escape tucked away in the countryside, surrounded by acres of hills and connected to town by a long, winding dirt road. But as the summer progresses and shadows lengthen, Daffodil comes to realize the house is more than it appears. The spacious home seems to close in on her, and as she takes the long road into town, she feels eyes on her the entire way, and something tugging her back. What Daffodil doesn't yet realize is that her job comes with a steep price. The house has a long ago grudge it needs to settle, and Daffodil is the key to settling it. The fact that this is called This Is Not A Ghost Story, and the synopsis sounds like a ghost story, there's got to be some kind of twist in just what is actually happening here. So I'm really excited to get to this one and see what what it's kind of like and find out what what the twist is or if there's no twist at all and it's just a title to throw you off. I don't know. 
battery died. I can never get through filming anything without the battery dying. I don't know how people survive without like multitudes of extra camera batteries. So that is all the books that are for the prompts for Gothtober, but I do have a few other just like little books here to kind of break up some of the <laughs> gothic reads, especially since almost all of them are gothic romances. It's gonna be a lot of kind of the same. So I have some middle grades to kind of break everything up just a, just a little bit. First off, the one I'm most excited for is Kiki's Delivery Service by Aiko Kodono. I mean, it's Kiki's Delivery Service and it's tiny. This is another will bite thing. And I am just hyped. I hope this is so good. I love witchy middle grades. I love Studio Ghibli. I'm so excited to read this and I think it's going to be a perfect palette cleanser while still having some kind of Halloween-y spooky vibes. Then another itty bitty one we have Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. It's very tiny, just gives me very, you know, autumn vibes with the colors and everything going on in the cover. And I don't know, I think this could be fun. It's about something. I, they probably go over a wall. And then I have Nura and the Immortal Palace, which is another one that I've heard has Ghibli vibes, which of course I'm always here for. And I've heard it reads younger, I think it'll read fast, and just be a really good palette cleanser for in between some of these other books. Okay, I lied, that's not everything. Uh, there's some romances on my Kindle I'll probably read. Uh, I will probably read Gleam by Raven Kennedy, which is the third book in the Plated Prisoner series, really enjoying those, need to continue. Have it on my Kindle, will most likely read that one. Might also read Feral Blood, which is another fae romance that I'm continuing. Might also read Pestilence by Laura Thalassa, which is the Alpha Ho book club pick, which is Becca's Patreon book club and that is another dark fantasy romance I believe. And I'll also read The Crack and Sacrifice by Katie Robert because it's short, it's monster smut, and it comes out in October. So that's it, that's everything. I swear I'm done now piling on the books that I probably won't get to read. I really need to read them though because I need my final girl to survive, okay? She needs to survive and get her revenge, god damn it! Otherwise, why did I take final girl photos? Why did I do that? If she's just gonna die. Okay. Anyway, thank you for watching. Comment if you've read any of these books, if you're excited for any of these books, if you're participating in Gothtober, what you're reading. I don't know. Talk to me about some things. I like it. I like it when you talk to me. I like the attention, but also don't perceive me. Don't pay attention to me. Do both. Somehow do both at the same time, okay? Figure it out. But if you don't have the energy for a whole ass comment, just comment the little stabby knife. A little stabby knife emoji. Yeah, subscribe if you want to see more of my face and whatever this is. Like the video, because why not? And I will see you next time.